Good morning. This is Dimitri Lascaris coming to you from Montreal, Canada on July 23rd, 2024. Historically, Russia and Greece have had friendly relations, but that has changed mightily since the war in Ukraine began in February 2022. Most countries in the world have refused to sanction Russia or to provide weaponry to Ukraine, most notably China, India, India Brazil, and South Africa. But in the days following Russia's February 2022 invasion, the Greek government of Kyriakos Mitsotakis quickly followed Washington's lead by imposing sanctions on Russia, and it has also given a broad array of weaponry to the Ukrainian military. Within the past several weeks, the strains in Greek-Russian relations have become severe. Now here to discuss these developments with me is a Greek journalist, Thanasis Avgerinos, and Thanasis uh, began traveling to the USSR in 1986. He's been a correspondent reporting on Russia and Eurasia since 1993. He's based in Moscow and is fluent in Russian. He frequently appears on Greek TV and is one of the very few journalists in Greece that I can identify who offers a relatively nuanced perspective on the war in Ukraine. Thank you very much for joining me today, Thanasi. Hello. Hello to everybody. So I want to start by asking you uh, about Greece's military aid to Ukraine. As many of our audience members will know, uh, Greece is still suffering the effects of a devastating financial crisis that began around 2010. It's never come close to recovering from that crisis. The official debt to GDP ratio in Greece is 162%, one of the highest in the world. Its unemployment rate officially is nearly 11%, one of the highest in Europe. About 26% of Greece's population is at risk of poverty or social exclusion, which is the fourth highest level of poverty risk in the European Union. And despite all of this, Greece devotes a whopping 3% of its GDP to military spending, which is the third highest level of military spending in NATO as a measure of GDP. So, Thanasi, could you summarize for us what military aid Greece has given to Ukraine thus far? And please tell us, with all of the economic challenges Greece confronts, how has it managed to provide this aid to a much larger country, Ukraine? Well, actually, the first thing I remember our government announced publicly that uh, is going to send uh, to Ukraine, uh, actually to the government of Kyiv, that's, uh, I think, properly to say, uh, it was a party of uh, contraband uh, batch of automatic rifles, Kalashnikovs, that were confiscated some uh, months earlier. Actually, they were Ukrainian on an Ukrainian cargo ship. Uh, that's where it started. Uh, well, the next deal was um, connected to some BMP-1 armored personal carriers. Uh, it's uh, Soviet-era uh, vehicles and uh, some uh, anti-aircraft systems. Uh, Greece had received all that uh, stuff uh, from East Germany after the unification of uh, uh, the two Germanies. Uh, well, actually, we uh, were supposed to deliver all that after we had taken uh the same uh new uh, german murder type uh systems uh, i mean vehicles uh for our uh, military personnel on on the islands that's the main point point i mean uh, all that uh material was on the islands near turkey uh, which uh is now and was forever the greatest threat to Greece. And that's the funniest thing. I mean, uh, uh, we have a, a concrete enemy. I mean, we know who is our enemy. Uh, it has been all the time, the historical time we can remember. It was Turkey. It's our main antagonist, our main opponent, uh, our greatest threat. And uh, we are in the same coalition, I mean, in NATO. Uh, and we are putting sanctions to Russia and doing nothing against 
Turkey, although Turkey in its 50 years now uh, has occupied, it, uh, has uh, is being occupying 38% uh, of uh, Cyprus. So um, there was a, a lot of opposition against that decision of the Greek government taking uh, uh, army vehicle, vehicles, careers, personal careers that uh, we needed them on the islands. Uh, they told to uh, uh, everybody that was against that uh, we first uh, are waiting uh, the Germans to replace them. But uh, everything, of course, happened uh, as usually. I mean, we sent practically everything without replacing anything. Uh, so there are many, many uh, people from the army uh, in it or uh, being uh, veterans of the army that uh, say that uh, uh, everything uh, has been, uh, uh, I mean, all the infrastructure, our infrastructure on the islands is empty. Uh, we are giving everything because of uh, the pressure from the United States that is constantly increasing. Um, well, the pressure from the one side is constantly increasing and our government is constantly giving in to it. And uh, huge stocks of uh, shells must already have been delivered. There are eyewitnesses that uh, constantly record such trucks leaving camps uh, uh, or arms depots uh, and uh, moving uh, mostly uh, and frequently uh, through the port of uh, Alexandropolis, which has now become uh, a regular U.S. military base. I want to come. Um, I want to come back to that uh, port in a moment, uh, but I just want to ask you something about military spending in Greece and NATO, because you raised the issue of Turkey, the threat it poses, Greece's membership in NATO. I've always been amazed at the level of military spending in Greece, and then it's always been my impression that the way that the Greek government and military justify these expenditures, even in a time of so much economic hardship is by reference to the threat that Turkey poses. I mean, if it isn't that, what possible explanation could there be? <laughs> you know, who else threatens Greece besides Turkey, you know, for spending so much money when the populace is suffering so much. Um, and at the same time, as you mentioned, Greece and Turkey are both in NATO. I would have thought that the primary benefit to Greece of being in NATO would be that this would uh, eliminate effectively the threat of a Turkish attack, Turkish aggression, because that's um, you know something that people in a military alliance aren't supposed to do to each other. They're not supposed to threaten each other, let alone attack each other. Um, and you uh, provided to me before we began today a poll that was recently done by Pew, which showed uh, that 59% of Greeks this was done, I think, in the spring of this year. 59% of Greeks have an unfavorable view of NATO, and only 37% of Greeks have a favorable view of NATO. Um, how do you account for the fact, you know, that, I mean, I suspect that if the populace had its way, Greece wouldn't even be in NATO, or at least there would be a serious discussion about getting out. How do you account for the fact that the government seems so committed to NATO when there's this level of uh, discontent with the military alliance? Well, actually, I, I know that uh, this is the lowest percentage that you can find. I, I believe that the real percentage of uh, disliking NATO or the policy of the United States uh, in Greece uh, is even greater. So um, uh, the problem is that uh, we've been, we, uh, as well as Turkey, since 1952, I think, members of the NATO alliance. But uh, we have seen nothing helpful for us. I mean, uh, uh, we had uh, a civil war that uh, actually was uh, a war of NATO against uh, left-wing and communist left-wing people, people after the Second World War. And uh, when we needed possibly NATO to give us assistance when uh, 
uh, Turkey was uh, invading Cyprus and uh, occupying Cyprus. Of course, it's an independent uh, country, but very uh, connected with Greece, uh, mostly populated by Greek, Greek people. And uh, we, we had the NATO uh, dictatorship uh, for many years, for seven years, uh, since 1965 to 1974. You're referring Actually, to the, the Greek colonel who was a CIA agent and uh, a Nazi collaborator yeah. during World War II. So, so that's that's the gifts we take from uh, NATO, yeah? Right. Uh, a junta uh, 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 and, uh, and uh, the occupation of uh, Cyprus. And after after uh, the um, dictatorship failed and fall apart, f fell apart, uh, Actually, we started knowing many new things that uh, practically the invasion, the Turkish invasion was uh, planned by the famous uh, 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 Kissinger. I mean, the the American government practically. And uh, and they, they were given the they, they've been giving them to Turkey uh, a practical assistance. Uh, Making everything they could against any try, uh, any try of Greece to uh, stop that invasion. So, uh, well, my generation has been uh, growing uh, with all that knowledge, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, well, this this is changing uh, a lot because uh, uh, the United States for many decades have been working on that stuff. I mean, they're trying to change that uh, uh, stable Greek opinion that um, Turkey is uh, is not our ally. It cannot be our ally. And uh, United States and NATO practically are not our allies because we, we understand and we know that when everything, when something will go, is going to happen with Turkey, uh, maybe the United States will try uh, for uh, some period to stop them or to coordinate things. But if it's, it becomes worse, we understand that uh, there will be no help and uh, we have to cope with uh, our uh, problems uh, only by, uh, by our own. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the, uh, an absurd that uh, it's, uh, I mean, on, in the basis of our Greek politics uh, nowadays. You know, I, I just on a personal note, uh, Thanasi, uh, I remember that period well, even though I was born and raised in Canada. My parents uh, left the south of Greece, a village called Xirokambi in the 1950s uh, because of the poverty uh, resulting from the Nazi occupation and the Civil War. And uh, in 1970, so this would have been the third year of the junta, they took me and my sisters to Greece for the first time. And we were taken to Xirokambi and we were sitting in the village square where everybody would gather at night and have a coffee and chat about stuff. And my father, who was very outspoken about politics, he struck up a conversation with his cousin uh, in the square. I was sitting at the table with them and we were all having a soda. And, um, and he was speaking in a normal voice, my father, about politics, and he was obviously opposed to the junta. And his cousin looked at him, Khalili, uh, and said, George, you need to shut up. Because, uh, you know, if people hear what you're saying, we could all be in serious trouble. And uh, as a seven-year-old boy, I heard that. I never heard that before in my life and hadn't heard it since uh, in any conversation my father had about politics. So I'll never forget that moment. Uh, having, I, I can't imagine what it was like to have actually grown up under the junta. Uh, which ultimately uh, killed many students at the Athens uh, Polytechnic years later. In any event, I'd like to uh, keep the focus. This is an important part of the story, uh, how we get to today in Greece, but um, I want to keep the focus on Greece-Russia Russia relations. And you mentioned this um, port, uh, Alexandriopoulos, uh, in the, so this would be, a, it's very close to the Turkish-Greek border in the northeast of the country. And uh, I understand. Uh, talk, talk to us a bit about how important that port has become to supplying weapons to Ukraine's military, not just Greece doing so, but all of NATO doing so, and how the workers there have reacted 
uh, to the use of the port for that purpose? Well, uh, well, we have just to remember that uh, Alexandropolis, it was a part of uh, uh, the so-called uh, 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 Burgas Alexandropolis system of transporting Russian uh, oil. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, the, it, it, it was never built. Uh, and I think it's uh, highly not only politically or geopolitically uh, um, uh, a ba basic thing, but uh, it's also, I think it's very symbolical that uh, 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 the United States chose this uh, route to uh, Ukraine. Uh, I think, of course, it's uh, the easiest. I mean, all the uh, military people say that uh, it's... Uh, uh, a, a, a very, uh, a very uh, uh, ma 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 needed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very short, the, relatively short. Yeah, it's it's the shortest, actually. Yes, and um, there there have been uh, many uh, protests uh, on uh, around these uh, military uh, uh, facilities. I mean, there have been uh, demonstrations uh, organized uh, from uh, some um, youth organizations or from uh, um, other uh, organizations. Many of them are close to the Communist Party of Greece. Uh, actually, practically, the Communist Party of Greece, which is, uh, I think, uh, the biggest in the uh, Western world, uh, it has now something like 8% of the vote. Uh, but um, actually, its uh, popularity or uh, their arguments are very highly appreciated in Greece, more than their uh, uh, their vote or the, the, more, more than the people that support them at the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there have been uh, some um, trade unions uh, that were... Uh, against all that uh, stuff, but practically they cannot stop that. I mean, uh, there there have been many protests, many demonstrations, but uh, it's not something that you can stop if uh, a government and uh, uh, all the allies, all the alliance, the NATO want want it to to happen, and it's happening. I mean. Uh, uh, everything is being transported through that route. Uh, many, many, uh, many things are uh, moving there by night uh, when uh, nobody can uh, understand it or see it. There is no coverage from uh, the media. That's also very strange and uh, uh, not so um, Greek. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. all the Greek media know and fix fix uh, everything that ha is happening in Greece, except of that. I mean, we know nothing about uh, that base. Um, we, we just have to remember that it was uh, made at the, the decision maybe has been uh, earlier, but it was made when Syriza, a left -wing, uh, wing party was uh, at uh, the in the government. And uh, well, that's, that's the strangest thing. I mean, all all people that have been for some period uh, speaking against uh, against that uh, policy that uh, makes us uh, possibly um, a very uh, troubled uh, part of that war that uh, makes us uh, a, a great problem uh, are changing their minds and uh, are. Uh, doing uh, whatever uh, instructions or whatever is coming from uh, the Washington uh, uh, or from our uh, Brussels and uh, NATO, I don't know, he headquarters. So so days ago, Thanasi Al Jazeera reported that Greece plans to sell 32 F-16 jets to the U.S., which would then upgrade them and transfer them to the government in Kiev. Uh, Actually, I'm going to refer to it as a regime because I think that's a much more accurate uh, description. Uh, some Greek military experts have ex expressed concerns over 
the potential gap this would leave in Greece's Air Force, uh, which apparently aims to maintain around 200 operational aircraft. Also, Greece owns one Russian-made S-300 long-range air defense battery, one, which is stationed in Crete, and government sources said Greece has offered to send it to Ukraine if the U.S. would replace it with a Patriot missile battery. How the U.S. is going to do that when it's struggling to provide uh, Patriot missile batteries to Ukraine and Israel uh, is a mystery. Now, on top of all of that, Greece and Ukraine are currently negotiating a 10-year assistance agreement. Um, Greece's policies toward Ukraine's government cannot be reconciled with recent polling data. A recent poll done by Pew, again, thank you for providing this to me, showed that only 27% of Greeks have confidence in Zelensky, whereas 72% do not have confidence in him. And... Um, more importantly, uh, recent polls show that a majority of Greeks oppose increased defense spending for Ukraine, uh, as do most Europeans, by the way, and that a majority of Greeks oppose sending more weapons to Ukraine. So one would think that in this political environment, Thanasi, the opposition parties uh, would be fiercely critical of the uh, government's policies towards arming Ukraine, which don't appear to be weakening at all. Um, in fact, the Greek government arguably is escalating its military support for the regime in Kiev. Uh, despite all of this, you mentioned Syriza, which um, at the time that the decision was made about Alexandriopoulos was led by somebody who was supposed to be a leftist, Alexis Tsipras, the former prime minister of Greece. Now it's being run by a man who, a Greek who was a banker in the United States and the party seems to be falling apart, uh, partly because he seems to have no interest in pursuing any kind of a left-wing agenda. But in any event, other than the Communist Party, uh, what do the other opposition parties say about all of this? Is Syriza uh, trying to put a stop to the arming of Ukraine and the depletion of Greece's military stocks? Uh, PASOK, the nominally socialist party that ruled Greece for a long time, is it opposed to the arming of Ukraine? Other than the communists, is anybody in Greece's parliament putting up resistance to this? Well, uh, firstly, uh, our uh, minister of defense, then Diaz, uh, has recently said that Greece is planning to sell more than uh, 100 aircrafts. Uh, of different types, uh, different jets, uh, uh, and uh, we're trying to earn some, I don't know, two or three billion dollars. Uh, but, um, well, Al Jazeera uh, has reported, uh, as you said, that we are planning to sell 32 of them to the United States. Of course, we understand that they will be upgraded and then given to uh, Kiev. Um, well, the, uh, officially, uh, our government is uh, saying it's not true, but uh, practically, um, well, all 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 things, all kind of information that has been in uh, the media recently, uh, it's it, it's been uh, uh, it, it's it, it's coming true, and uh, people understand that. Our government is not saying anything that uh, uh, is uh, what, what exactly they are doing and what exactly are, they are planning to uh, agree or to sign with uh, the Ukrainian uh, government. So, uh, well, that's the first point. I'm afraid that uh, we are going to lose and uh, many people connected to our military services are afraid that... Uh, we are losing uh, all uh, uh, all that uh, air air defense that we had, and uh, it has been for many years that uh, uh, the the active conflict between Greece and Turkey is uh, uh, there have been many uh, air, air fights on, on the air. So we need that uh, air perhaps. Turkish warplanes, I understand, regularly violate Greece. Greece's yes, system, right. And we are trying to stop it, and that's why possibly uh, many people say that uh, Greek pilots are very well trained, 
And that's why we are also taking part in uh, training the Ukrainians, uh, well, the pilots that they have to uh, work with uh, F-16s. But um, of course, uh, many people doubt that it could uh, happen. I mean, uh, giving F-16 jets uh, to uh, uh, Kiev and uh, trying to do something with uh, Russian uh, 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 air defense. Uh, I think it's, uh, well, the actually pressure is being made uh, to us about that system of S-300. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, well, the only uh, Russian-made uh, air defense uh, that we have it, we keep it. And, uh, uh, well, our government is saying that there is, is not going to give it. Well, uh, the, the main problem is that I feel uh, there's no actually opposition to that, uh, to that policy. Uh, we, okay, we, we have been used to say that uh, Syriza or uh, PASOK are left-wing parties or used to be left-wing parties, but uh, I feel that uh, there has been a policy of uh, Americanizing them, making them very close to uh, mm -hmm. the politics of the United States. Uh, there, 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 there have been programs paid by the United, U.S. government to uh, get closer to that uh, uh, parties, to work with the activists, to work with their organizations. And the final, uh, the final uh, act of that is that uh, actually the new leader of Syriza uh, just uh, came from uh, the United States. Uh, he was not living in Greece. He, has, he hasn't been working here. He actually came then uh, in uh, a small period of time, in some weeks or months, he just took the party and uh, uh, the party that, as you're telling, is falling apart. So, uh, and it's becoming uh, closer to something else. I mean, uh, just yesterday, I think he published a photo with Joe Biden saying that, uh, well, this is his ideal. He was very sorry for Joe Biden going out of politics. And uh, he was saying that, uh, and he has said it already many times before, that he is trying to make uh, a Greek demo democratic party. So, okay. uh, uh, well, the Greek Democrats. So, well, if 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 that stuff is has anything to do with uh, uh, socialism or left wing policies, as it was Syriza, well, uh, I, I can hardly see that connection. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Joe Biden. I don't know if he is in good shape. Maybe he could come and be in. Uh, uh, giving advices to yeah. our Kasselakis new party. Didn't didn't he once refer to himself Biden as Bidenopolis? <laughs> yeah, that well, that's another myth uh, being uh, produced by the Greek media. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a friend of Greece. <laughs> I I don't know if anybody in Greek diaspora in the United States uh, believe that uh, story. But okay, uh, sometimes Biden, yeah, was called in Greek media as Bidenopoulos. Right. So um, recently, Russian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson uh, Maria Zakharova called Greece's decision to send weapons to Ukraine, quote, deeply mistaken and, quote, criminal, close quote, warning that, quote, in the end, the weapons will be turned on civilians, including the Greeks, a reference apparently to 150,000 ethnic Greeks who uh, lived at the time uh, or uh, may continue to be there in the cities of Mariupol, which the Russians now control. This is on uh, on the Sea of Azov, I believe, and uh, Odessa, uh, which is not under Russian control, uh, but is not far from uh, the line of combat. Um, could you talk to us about um, the Greek community in Mariupol and Odessa, particularly Mariupol, because I know you've been there, and I imagine you've had opportunities to speak to uh, persons of Greek ethnicity who live in Mariupol, who live there. Can you tell us about these communities? How big are they? What has happened to them 
generally speaking, since uh, the special military operation began in February 2022? Uh, well, actually, in Odessa, there must be only a few thousand Greeks uh, remaining there. Uh, but in Mariupol and in villages around Mariupol, uh, there have been uh, more than 100, 150, possibly thousands of people. Um, most of them, as uh, well, Greeks say, I've been uh, visiting Mariupol uh, through the war, and uh, now it's more or less safe place to come, and uh, for many, many times. And uh, well, Greeks are saying that uh, more of uh, more than seventy or eighty thousand people uh, with uh, Greek origin uh, are living there. And uh, and uh, many of them uh, are coming back. I mean, people that have uh, left during the war and uh, they are coming back to fix, uh, uh, to check their houses. Sorry, when you said houses. when you said leaving there, I think, were you, do you mean to say living there that they actually, there were 70,000 that are there now? Because yes, it's okay. yes. It's Sorry. more than 70 or 80,000 people of Greek origin that live there. And, and some uh, of them who left are coming back. Yes, many of them, or, or or at least they have uh, they their relatives, they have connections, and uh, there are people that coming back, and uh, uh, many of them are finding that uh, their uh, flats have been uh, renovated or rebuilt. Uh, well, uh, well, that's that's uh, that's a, a true thing that. Uh, all Greek people that were living around Mariupol or uh, on uh, the south or at, uh, at the east of uh, Ukraine, they, they have uh, the same uh, attitude to politics or whatever uh, as all the other Russian-speaking people living there. Uh, I mean, uh, they've been voting for Yanukovych uh, or they, they, they use Russian language. Uh, they have also their Greek dialects. I just want to pause there. So people who don't know, Yanukovych was the elected president of Ukraine who was overthrown in a coup in 2014 because basically he was trying to maintain good relations with Russia. And uh, yeah. as I understand, his support came overwhelmingly from the parts of what was formerly Ukraine that are now controlled by the Russian Federation, including Crimea, uh, the Donbass, Luhansk, and so forth. Is that that's correct? That's who Yanukovych is. Yes, and uh, most of Greeks of that uh, uh, region. I mean, uh, Odessa, uh, uh, Crimea, and uh, Mariupol have been voting uh, for Yanukovych, and uh, uh, well, living the same life as all Russian speak speakers uh, there, uh, and uh, that's why. Most of them decided not to leave uh, uh, their homes and their villages, and uh, they have no problem with uh, with Russians. I mean, they have been uh, visiting each other, they have been working with each other, they have been uh, living there for some of them uh, practically for centuries. And uh, actually, for me, it was. Um, it was a great surprise that uh, I understood that uh, villages of Mariupol and also the city of Mariupol is uh, older than the new Greek uh, state. I mean, the state that was created in 1830, and uh, we are planning to uh, 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 we are planning to have our uh, 200. Uh, by, uh, by, by by Centennial, yes. Yeah, in uh, in some years. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, actually, th those villages and uh, Mariupol was uh, founded in uh, 1780. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's even I don't know 50 years older than uh, the state, the new state of uh, Greece, and um, well, that's another. That's another paradox that we have uh, ministers of the our state of Greek state 
that he, he, they, they are saying now that uh, there are no Greeks there. We don't know them. Or they have already left. Or, I don't know, Russia has killed them all. But it's not true. I mean, I've been there. I've seen them. Um, they're uh, living their lives. Uh, they can uh, uh, use whatever language they want. Uh, actually, I know a Greek friend that his wife is uh, Ukrainian. And uh, she she was very keen in uh, Ukrainian folklore. And they, they she has she had no problem to uh, reopen uh, and restart uh, her activities uh, connected to uh, Ukrainian folklore. So she opened uh, a union with uh, I don't know a Saturday school with dances with uh, forms with uh, Ukrainian cuisine and doing whatever she she wanted. I mean. Uh, that was never a problem in the uh, Russian-speaking uh, regions. And uh, that's mainly a problem that came from uh, the nationalistic um, part of Ukraine, uh, well, that it's closer to Lviv or may some uh, other uh, cities uh, western than Kiev. Mm -hmm. So uh, Greeks have no no problem there except of uh, having no connections to Greek to the official Greek government. I mean, Greece has closed the um, a consulate that was working in Mariupol, the general consulate, and uh, uh, people have lived there with uh, no uh, connection to the, their historical uh, uh, country. Uh, uh, motherland. So uh, there, there, there are many of them that have Greek passports. Many of them have relatives in Greece, and it's very difficult to uh, make all that uh, uh, bureaucracy that is needed to have a visa or to come to Greece. And uh, uh, that's very strange because uh, uh, practically we have been uh, saying. Uh, well, I think. Greece is must be the only European country, the only member of EU that has uh, such a big uh, uh, diaspora in Ukraine. And uh, before the war started, we've been expressing a great uh, interest in what is happening there. And now, uh, for where some somebody is trying to make us to forget everything about. Uh, uh, Mariupol or the people living there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Hungary, I, I think it has a, a very tiny, very small diaspora in um, uh, Ukraine, but uh, many times uh, Budapest is act asking Kiev to be very careful with their diaspora, but B Athens has never done uh, such uh, thing, has never uh, asked Zelensky for uh, uh, taking care of uh, Greek diaspora or whatever. So I'd like to share with uh, our audience a couple of videos that you sent to me uh, that you took when you were in Mariupol recently. Uh, and uh, I'd like to start with uh, this one. Well, uh, this must be the 53rd school of Mariupol is uh, a fully renovated uh, new school. Uh, I think that was filmed in... Um, on the 20th of March, the day of uh, Russian elections, or presidential elections, uh, all Mariupol, all uh, region took part actively in that elections. Uh, that was a, uh, a center of uh, vote, voting center. And uh, well, that's what's happening to Mariupol in many other places. I mean, uh, well, I'd like to send you more videos, but uh, I didn't have the time. So uh, I can just say that, uh, well, I've been in Mariupol uh, when the war was uh, starting. And uh, I've been there, I don't know, possibly 50 times. And I've seen all the changes. I mean, uh, uh, that's unique. Uh, and uh, I, I can I can find no other information of uh, a kind of war that is uh, 
is, is not finished actually, is, uh, is keeping on. And uh, partly some of the destructed uh, places, cities, is being practically rebuilt. Uh, Mariupol uh, had uh, 70 or 80 percent uh, destroyed buildings, uh, and uh, most of them are uh, uh, rebuilt, renovated, or uh, uh, completely, uh, the, well, the, everything has completely changed. They are keep they are keeping they are still building historical uh, buildings uh, that are, are, are more difficult to reconstruct or to renovate. Uh, so uh, that's what's what's happening now, and uh, it's it's very strange that uh, uh, Western Western journalists and Western media are not coming or they are not allowed to come. I mean, from their uh, governments because uh i i've met the french german some american journalists uh, or whatever brazilian chinese uh, from all, the whole world that uh, have no problem to come and uh fix and uh, see uh, whatever they can really see and uh, report about that right. so, so well that's a problem that uh, i think we, we, we have to somehow cope with so lastly, uh, Anasi, I'd like to talk to you about uh, a recent revolution in the New York Times. Uh, there was an investigative report based upon videos, uh, chat messages, and other evidence that New York Times reporters had reviewed showing that soldiers in the Ukrainian military had killed Russian soldiers who were clearly surrendering, uh, which, by the way, if the allegations are uh, true, uh, would constitute a war crime. Uh, there is evidence, moreover, and the New York Times talked about this at some length, uh, that one of the soldiers fighting on the side of Ukraine who participated in the killings and appears to have played an important role in the killing of surrendering Russian soldiers is in fact a Greek mercenary fighting on the side of the Ukrainian army. Uh, what do we know about this Greek soldier, and what, if anything, has the Greek government said about this controversy? Well, uh, I'm afraid that the uh, Greek government has said nothing. I mean, uh, I know that some Greek journalists asked the Minister of, the, of uh, uh, Justice, and he said that, uh, of course, is illegal, and if uh, his identity uh, will be known and uh, there will be charges against him, but um, well, uh, in media, the, the, uh, well, uh, I've seen his name. I mean, we know who is Zeus. Uh, Zeus is uh, his called name, right? This is the yeah. This is as a soldier, but not his real name. Uh, and uh, we know uh, exactly where is he from. He had some. Uh, he was active in uh, uh, social media, and uh, uh, well, there are some uh, reports in uh, uh, the Twitter or in the Telegram that he's already killed. But I'm, I've been asking my Greek friends that are fighting there, and they are saying me that uh, it's not true, that they cannot uh, uh, say it's true. So uh, he, he must be somewhere there. Maybe he is producing or his friends are producing the story of being killed. Uh, maybe he wants to leave or whatever, but uh, si since we know his name and uh, he's not, his name uh, is now uh, known, but uh, uh, I, I don't believe that uh, uh, he, it's, um, uh, it's what really Greek people should uh, or think about that war. I mean, uh, that's very strange that we have such People, uh, well, somewhere I've seen that he was a, a Nazi lover in uh, Greece. He was uh, an extreme right in, in some extreme right organizations, uh, maybe. But uh, in any case, we understand that it's a war crime what he did. And uh, he should be, of course, charged and punished. But um, 
well, uh, yesterday or today, I think uh, Russians are saying that uh, are actively fighting against uh, mercenaries in uh, on Ukrainian soil. And uh, uh, well, I don't know, but uh, I, I feel that uh, all that stuff is uh, has uh, a, a, a very bad end for everybody. So I don't I don't think that uh, in any case. Uh, he's uh, expressing any uh, anybody from Greece. I mean, uh, if if you ask people here, uh, seventy or eighty percent of them will tell you that uh, they cannot understand that war. They want uh, to finish that war. They're against what uh, we are sending their uh, weapons. And of course, uh, many of them they say that uh, they understand that Russia is fighting against. Uh, uh, 40 or 50 countries from uh, the West and uh, they understand that it's a uh, a question of great importance for the security of the Russian state. Uh, so let's wish that uh, some kind of uh, compromise or of, uh, solution will be found uh, as soon as possible and uh, that war will finish. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. This is ultimately going to cause uh, more suffering to the Ukrainian people than to anybody else. Uh, and uh, we cannot stop this war soon enough. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today, Thanasi, and I hope we can have uh, future discussions about uh, this terrible tragedy that has unfolded uh, in that part of the world.